ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the July 18th PBC on CBS and Showtime conference call. Your host for today is Lisa. You may begin. Thank you, operator. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we started with the fighters uh, for this huge, huge day of boxing next Saturday, July 18th. I did want to first turn the call over to Steven Espinoza, Executive Vice President and General Manager of Showtime Sports, who can get into the details of the fight and the first fighter we will have. Uh, speak immediately after. Stephen is uh, Chris Ariel of it. Stephen, please uh, kick it off. Thanks. Thanks very much, Lisa. Um, as Lisa said, it is a huge weekend of boxing coming up on CBS and Showtime. First on Friday night, we've got a stellar showbox card featuring six undefeated prospects in action. And on Sunday, a unique day-night doubleheader, uh, which far as we've, we have found... Um, is unprecedented. Is CBS and Showtime teaming up to televise a total of five fights, including <laughs> world title fights and the title eliminator, all coming from the Don Haskins Center in my hometown, El Paso, Texas. So the Espinosa family is very happy about these events, as are all the rabid boxing fans uh, that are in the El Paso area. Um, at 4 p.m., excuse me, 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, 4 Eastern on CBS, we have the always exciting heavyweight star Chris Ariola, as well as the U.S. debut of super bantamweight world champion Carl Frampton. Shortly, you'll hear from both Chris and Carl, as well as Carl's promoter, Barry McGuigan. Um, interesting note about Barry McGuigan, obviously a Hall of Famer in his own right. Um, Barry McGuigan appeared in one of the first televised bouts ever on Showtime back in 1986 against Steve Cruz. Um, unfortunately, he didn't win that night, but he was one of the very first uh, televised events on Showtime. It's a pleasure to have him back. Um, then in the evening uh, portion of the telecast on Showtime, 7 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern, we have what is now a three-fight card. i um, happy to announce that we've added a third fight to the card. Um, the very exciting Amir Imam will be taking on Fernando Angulo in a super lightweight title eliminator. Then we are also excited uh, to have a super flyweight world championship. McJoe Arroyo, the exciting Puerto Rican star, against Arthur Villanueva. And, of course, a battle of two very exciting Mexican fighters, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Marcos Reyes. So all in all, um, it could be a very historic day, certainly unprecedented as far as we know uh, in the television aspect. And now I'm going to go back over to Lisa. Okay, great. Thanks so much. And uh, mentioned, we're just going to go straight ahead and introduce uh, Chris, the Nightmare Areola. Chris, could you please uh, make an opening statement just about training camp, and then we will uh, open it up for questions. Uh, me, how you doing? Um, well, I'm over here in Riverside training. I've been out here training for the past seven seven weeks, working hard, grinding every day, getting ready for this uh, big fight in uh, El Paso, you know, El Paso is a big fight town, and I'm looking forward to uh, showing, exhibiting my, uh, my boxing skills and showing everybody uh, that I still got it, and I'm, and I'm still a uh, force to be reckoned with and um, going for this title run again. Okay, great. Um, can we please open it up for questions? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you have any questions, please press star 1. Again, if there's any questions that you would like to ask, please press star 1 on your telephone. Please hold while our questions come into queue. Our first question is from Felix Chavez with El Paso Times. Go ahead. Hi, Chris. Uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, I guess just talk a little bit about uh, this next fight and your opponent. What do you know about him, and what are the keys for you? Um, I know that he's a very, very slick fighter, a very slick boxer, a boxer that, uh, that switches a lot, switches from left to righty, depending on uh, the kind of uh, offense that you offer. And the thing that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to do is uh, use a lot of my angles and give him uh, different, different views because uh, – He's a very skilled powerful fighter, and I, I I want to kick him out as, as soon as I can because they don't pay me overtime. And uh, <laughs> the, 
the uh, El Paso fans deserve a, a good outing for me. And I guess just one quick follow-up. Uh, I, I know you've had a couple of title shots uh, in your career, Chris, and I know there's been some talk of you getting another title shot in September. Uh, what, what's what's your focus right now? What's your mentality like? Uh, my, my focus right now is uh, the 18th. That's my one and only focus because without no wins, where's my title shot? Sure. You're only as good as your last win, and that's the way I feel. So, you know, all them talks are just talk. It doesn't mean nothing until I win this fight. Then we could really talk about it. So uh, first thing first is the 18th. I want to make sure that um, Cassie is a good fighter. And uh, when I beat him, I want to beat him in a, in a fashion that people want to see me fight uh, uh, Wilder, not just give him to me. I want to deserve that title fight. I want people to want to see that fight. So uh, that's, what I, that's my main goal of, of this fight is uh, showcasing my skills and showing everybody that I deserve another title shot. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from Chris Lopez with SportsTownElPaso.com. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you. Chris, uh, is there an ideal weight for you to fight at, and what do you plan to come in, tip the scales at on fight night? What will you weigh? Um, my main goal, first, first and foremost, my main thing is being a boxing machine. You know, you could you could see my weight. It doesn't uh, to me. It doesn't reflect my conditioning. The main thing is I want to be in good boxing weight, great boxing weight, in order for me to go to the full ten rounds, in order for me to throw eighty to hundred punches around. That is my main goal: is to showcase my boxing skills. <clears throat> and second, you know, as far as boxing weight, if I had an optimal weight, it would be in the mid forty, like forty four. Uh, 45, at the lowest, maybe 42. But for this fight, I think I'm going to come in in the high 40s, uh, 47, 48. But, uh, but the main thing is uh, El Paso fans are going to see a great, a good bo uh, good boxing weight and a great boxing fight from uh, myself. And just as a quick follow-up, how do you use your, your, your size advantage? How do you use your size advantage against an opponent? Uh, particularly on this fight coming up, how will you use that advantage you have? Well, as far as uh, my weight advantage, it's more uh, you gotta impose your will. You gotta impose your will as far as pushing them back, pushing them back smart with the jab and uh, um, make sure I keep him in his heels because uh, I don't want him being on his toes because he's very good on his toes. So the main thing I have to do is impose my will, moving my head, working behind a jab, and pushing it back to the ropes. Once that pushes back to ropes, it's time to work his body from the body to the head. You know, nosotros mexicanos, we love working the body. We love being a fajador, meaning we love being a brawler. And um, that's, what I, that's one thing that I'm going to come to do is uh, make sure that he knows that he's in a fight. Make sure that he understands that every time I touch him, I, I, I don't touch him to touch him. I touch him to hurt him. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Our final question for Chris is from Stephen Hubbard with City News Service. Go ahead. Uh, hello, Chris. Is this, um, am I right that this, is, this will be the first time that you'll fight on network broadcast television? And either way, uh, what does it mean to fight on uh, network uh, television, which everybody gets instead of like a Showtime or HBO? No criticism of that, but not everybody gets that. And you know, Maybe sometimes your friends and fans can't watch you on those because they don't have those. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, it's a, it's a privilege and an honor, man. Uh, to be fighting on national network TV, where everyone gets it, you know. It's, it's different to hear a regular person, a person that doesn't even know boxing, know some boxing. Like, I've been hit up by a guy like, hey, do you know Garcia? Hey, do you know Keith Thurman? And they never watched a boxing fight in their life. But the fact that now it's on uh, NBC, CBS, and all the uh, uh, free networks, people are able to... Uh, watch boxers and showcase their skills. And that's one thing that I'm so happy and honored to do is that it's not just the, ca the casual boxing fans, but it's just anyone. Anyone could watch me fight. And that's, that's pretty fucking dope. That's real an honor. And, and, and it drives me to want to display my, showcase my skills a lot more, knowing that there's going to be a wider audience watching me. Great thing. Okay, we actually have to take one more question for Chris before we turn it over to uh, Carl 
Terry and uh, Alejandro. So, uh, operator, please take the last question for us. Order. Certainly. Our next question is from Keith Eidig with the, rec uh, the record. Go ahead. Uh, hey, Chris. Uh, I was just wondering what you thought of uh, Wilder's performance against Molina, and were you surprised that Molina was able to give him the trouble that he did, considering what you did to him in your fight? To be honest with you, man, uh, when I watched that fight, I didn't think it was in the last two, three rounds. Um, personally, I think that Wilder carried him. Personally, I think that Wilder wanted to give himself rounds. I don't think that Wilder was really trying to take him out until he actually pushed on the gas. You know, it's like squad to Wilder, you know, he's trying to showcase. And sometimes trying to showcase, you get caught. And he got caught a couple of times with some stupid shots that he should never have been caught with. That's why I never never want to go around. I don't care how much a guy sucks. I want to get him out of there as soon as I can because all it takes is one punch to get knocked out. And um, I honestly believe that Wilder was just showcasing. I believe that Wilder was just carrying him to fight. I, I don't, I take nothing out of that fight. I take no, no honor of me taking Molina out quicker than him. Nothing. Does it encourage you though a little bit though if you were able to get the opportunity to fight him or... But it didn't encourage me. It didn't make me feel any any better, any different. What I got to see more off of him is when he fought uh, um, Severn. Now, that fight was a good fight. That fight is a, is a fight that I've seen a lot out of Wilder and a lot of good stakes, a lot of good and a lot of bad in Wilder. Um, as far as uh, him fighting Molina didn't encourage me, man, honestly, I don't fear nobody. I love fighting. I want to fight. I want to fight him just because I want to fight him. Especially now that since he has a title. And do I believe I could fight him? Yes. I believe that style, that style makes fights. And I believe that uh, uh, he hasn't been in the ring with someone like me. Someone that really doesn't give a crap. You know, I really don't care about myself. I'm, I really care about winning a fight. I'm wanting to put my life on the line because I want to win a fight. You know, the time that I cried when my trainer stopped it, I didn't cry because uh, uh, I quit or anything. I didn't quit. I cried because of my, my pride. I'm a prideful motherfucker. I had too much pride for myself. And to quit, that's horrible. Thank you, Chris. Hello? Okay, that's great. Um, Chris, thank you so much for your time. It was, that was uh, the time I've heard it. Pretty effing dope in a, on a conference call in my eight years of doing this, so that was excellent. Thank you so much. Really? <laughs> um, it's you. Just give one quick closing comment, and then we'll uh, move on to uh, Carl Frampton. Um, okay. Well, you want to say now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, um, I'm really looking forward to uh, July 18th to showcase my skills and for the whole United States to watch showcase boxing. And um, I'm happy that we're up here, and I can't wait to showcase my skills in El Paso, Texas, which I know has been hungry for big fights. And... Um, See you on the 18th. Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay, now I am delighted to uh, introduce Mr. Carl Frampton and his uh, Hall of Famer manager, Barry McGuigan. Um, and we also have Alejandro Gonzalez on the line. But before uh, we have him make an opening statement, I did want Carl and Barry uh, to say a few words. Guys, are you there? Yeah, we're here, yeah. Uh, Carl is... I'm here as well, Barry, so... Um, Carl, if you want to say something first, then. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the fight. I think it's, it's going to be a good fight. Um, kind of reiterating what Chris um, Chris just said there and I, you know, it's, it's given me a chance to showcase my talents on CBS, terrestrial TV in the US, also terrestrial television in, in the UK on ITV. So I, I'm really looking forward to a, a good fight. Uh, and uh, just to reiterate that point, uh, as a manager um, and a former world champion myself, uh, my name was, was sort of written in stone um, 30 years ago because I appeared on terrestrial TV. It's been away for a long time, and I think what Al Heyman is doing, and, and it's great for us to be associated with Al, who is you know, the go-to guy at the moment in boxing, and uh, to get terrestrial television fans interested in boxing, casual boxing fans, not just the, the aficionados, but people who are genuinely have a, have a, 
have a casual interest in boxing, but but we want we we'll watch big fights. I think it's great not just for Carl Frampton, but great for uh, all the fighters on the bill and great for boxing in general. So uh, we're thrilled to be here. We're already in El Paso. Um, Carl is expecting a tough fight from Alejandro Gonzalez, and uh, we're very much looking forward. To it. Okay, wonderful. We actually also have Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. on the line. Alejandro, are you there? Yeah, I do. Okay, great. Um, could you also make an opening comment just about how training camp's going and preparing uh, for Carl? Well, how it is, well, we're preparing 100%. Um, a hard, a hard um, camp because we're we're gonna fight a great champion. So we need we need to be 100% ready with the preparation. Okay, great. Um, that's perfect. Uh, operator, can you open up the call for questions, please? Yes, ma'am. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any questions that you would like to ask, please press the number, uh, I'm sorry, please press star one on your telephone. Again, it is star one on your telephone to ask a question. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it is star one on your telephone to ask a question. Our first question is from Jason Gonzalez with Real Combat Media. Go ahead. Uh, hello, Carl. Oh. I wanted uh, uh, I wanted to know. Um, well, basically, your name is not relatively known to the casual American boxing fan, and in this fight, you're going to get massive exposure to uh, American boxing fans. Basically, what does that mean to you? That means a hell of a lot. Um, you know, that's that's something me and my team have, have discussed. You know, I'm I'm pretty well known in the UK and Ireland, but in the United States, um, you know, unless you're a diehard boxing fan, you, you won't know who Carl Frampton is. So this has given me the chance for a, a lot of exposure. Um, terrestrial television, um, it, it's a big deal. Um, I think boxing has kind of been depraved. Um, it's, a, it's a sport for the working class. The working class people um, are not getting to see it because it's been hidden away on satellite channels for so long. So um, this is great for me. Not, well, not only for me, for boxing, uh, and also for our pretty new promotional team, Cyclone Promotions, to have uh, one of their fighters showcased on terrestrial on both sides of the Atlantic. Thank you. Our next question is from Kevin McRae with Bleacher Report. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, Carl, everyone. Thank you guys for doing the call today. I'm going to start off by saying Carl, I'm up into the best walk in a state fight on July 18th. Um, I, I have a couple of questions for you about the fight and about your, your first trip over to fight here in the United States. Um, if I could just start out, I was just wondering, you know, obviously you recently signed on with Al Heyman, and, and you guys made a couple of comments on that. I was just wondering if you could you know, briefly speak to what, went into your decision to sign on with Al? Was it the exposure that, that PBC brings? Was it obviously a deal with more money coming your way to your fights? What was the main reason that you decided to, to jump on board with Al and, and make the trip over to the United States? Well, we, we discussed it with our team, and we just it was it was a pretty easy decision, to be honest. I think the exposure that we can get with Al Heyman is absolutely massive and huge. And even more so than that, He's got a lot of the top fighters around super bantamweight and the featherweight division. All these names that I that I want to fight, you know, Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Mares, Gary Russell, the, those sort of fighters that that he's got that all him in control. So um, I, without linking up with him, it would have been pretty hard to make them fight. Um, so it was a pretty it was a pretty easy decision. Um, we were very grateful for the opportunity here. Um, you know, as I said before, the uh, answered previously, it was it's given us a chance for massive exposure here, and that's that's really the big the big thing, um, exposure from both sides of the Atlantic. Okay, if I could add to that, uh, Kevin, um, you know, there there isn't any bigger than than Al Heyman at the moment. I mean, he is the go-to guy, as I mentioned at the beginning, 
um, if you want to get into Amer the American market, and, and the reality is, is well, Carl is a superstar in, in in Britain and in Europe and in uh, and in Ireland. Um, the reality is, you when your career is dead and, uh, and and buried, all they remember is the stuff you've done in stateside. So it's a very important. Uh, decision for us to, to come over here and, and uh, try and be impressive and try and make a name for ourselves uh, uh, inside. Right, and I, I was going to touch on that briefly too. Was ask you, how how important? Is Kevin, we can't hear you very well. Are you away from the, the microphone or? How, is it better? Is it better now or? Slightly better, yeah. Okay, great. I was going to touch on that briefly too. How much one of the decision was the the ability to take. Take Carl. I guess you can both address this issue. You know, you mentioned it a couple of times. Carl's a massive star in the UK and in, in, in Ireland, Northern Ireland. You know, all throughout that region of the world, he's a very big name. How much, I guess, of that went into your decision to come over here and, and expand the market and, and be able to, to touch on those big fights against the Leo Santa Cruz, as Gary Russell, like you mentioned, you know, even Abner Mara, if, if he can upset Leo in, in August. You know, well, those here's are, the thing. Here's the thing. Um, Again, there are at the last count 27 million people in that with a virus descent in uh, in America. I think that's on the East Coast, actually. So we, you know, we want to we want to get into that market. It's a great market. Um, we need to you know get as many people on our side as possible. And uh, we have great respect for Alejandro Gonzalez and his dad. And you know, he's got a great. Mexican boxing heritage, and, and obviously that's the fight that we're looking at and concentrating on at the moment. But it would be foolish, uh, certainly of me, not to look ahead and plan ahead uh, and think about what are the you know super fights out there for us, and that is against um, Leo Santa Cruz and Abdul Maris, Gary Russell, and, and I believe Frampton can go to 130 as well and be successful there. But you know, one stage at a time, and we're not taking a rise off the the, the ball on. 18th. It's a very tough fight for us. Alejandro Gonzalez is a great fighter. And by the way, we didn't think he could speak English as good either, <laughs> so, or American. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so it, you know, I, I I don't have to state the obvious. You sort of, it's almost a a, um, a rhetorical question, Kevin. All of those things you already said, and and, and ultimately, without connecting with Al, we wouldn't be able to do any of that. So it's. Uh, we think it's a very, um, very much a worthwhile uh, move. Uh, Carl, what do you think? Yeah, I just agree 100% on, on everything that Barry said there. I just think, you know, it, it kind of sounds like I'm repeating myself a little bit, but, uh, it, you know, if you want to do anything in, in America at the minute, the way boxing's going, um, Al Heyman is the man to link up with, and we've done that. Um, I'm very pleased with with doing that. Me, myself, and the team are all very pleased, and we think that things are just really going to take off. But it's again, it's one fight at a time. I'm not looking past Alejandro Gonzalez. I, you know, I allow my manager Barry and, and the rest of the team to think ahead. But for me, I just think about the fighter in front of me, and that's Alejandro Gonzalez. He's the only guy I've been thinking about for the last uh, 14 week training camp, um, and that's that's the way it, it will remain until the fight. Alright, I've got one really quick brief one to close out with you. Uh, Barry mentioned it. You know, I, I just want to know what your your thoughts are on fighting in Texas. Obviously, you know, you're you have Irish background. You know, you're big in the UK. How big of a dream would it be for you? Obviously, maybe for your next fight or a fight down the road. I obviously has some connections to BBC and in arenas like the Barclays Center, where there's you know New York. Obviously, has a very large Irish population. I'm just wondering what your thoughts on about the possibility of maybe you know, taking your taking your show to a place like that, where there's you know, a large group of people who will be there to support you. I mean, the Irish fighters, you know, and UK fighters obviously draw extremely well in both in New York. We had Andy Lee fight here a couple of weeks back, and then he he's obviously a local favorite. Guys like that. I'm just wondering what your thoughts on are on about maybe fighting on the East Coast and maybe drawing some of those new. American Irish boxing fans who may not be familiar with you yet. That's where we want to be. We want to be on the East Coast. Um, we want to be fighting around the East Coast, New York, Madison Square Garden, the new Barclays Center, them, them sort of places, Boston potentially as well. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, there's already talk on my next fight. I'm not too sure where it will be, but 
good chance my next fight could be in the UK and Ireland again somewhere. Um, and then we'd be looking to go to New York and St. Patrick's Day. Um, I think I think that's where my you know American fan base will be mainly on the East Coast. Um, and I think they'll appreciate my style. You know, people. It's all well and good me winning fights, um, but I think I think what the Americans and the boxing fans want to see is exciting fighters. And I think that I've got an, an exciting a style to please them. So um, East Coast is where we want to be. I think El Paso. This fight was it was the only matinee show that um, we could link up with British TV time. So it's it's sitting pretty in, in, in the UK at the minute. It's being shown at, at around 10 p.m. Um, in the UK this fight. So that, that's why we had to go to El Paso. But, um, you know, I'm very, very happy for the chance to fight here. But, of course, you know, I want to I want to fight on the East Coast. Can I also add to that, uh, Kevin, that, that uh, uh, he obviously um, Carl wants to do what uh, GGG has done, Golovkin, and we want to get uh, the Mexican fans on our side too. And, and uh, obviously the fight against Alejandro Gonzalez on the 18th of July is a, is a fight that we, that Carl must win. He must win impressively, and we hope that we will garner some support from the Mexican fans too, and that they will appreciate Carl's style. All right, guys, great. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, best of luck in a safe fight to uh, Carl on the, uh, the 18th. Thank you. Our next question is from Felix Chavez with El Paso Times. Go ahead. Hi, Carl. Uh, obviously, with with Barry in your corner and working with you, there's a, a great link to history there. Uh, Barry going way back to the 80s and a world champion. What's it like working with with him, and what kind of things have you learned from him uh, during your time together? Well, it's great, Barry. You know, Barry. I've been with Barry since I turned professional around six years ago. Um, originally, at the start, I I done a lot of training with Barry. Um, he used to hold the mitts for me and, and take me to a training session. Um, I, I lived in his house while he trained um, in, in England, the south of England. Um, I have a very good relationship with Barry and the rest of his family. His son, Shane, is now training me at the minute. Um, he kind of took the reins, um, kind of around my 10th fight, my 10th pro fight. Um, but Barry is in the gym most days. He, he comes and watches me, me spar. Um, and, you know, he, he's been there and done it. He's done it all, and to be getting advice every day of, of someone who has done that is obviously great and very beneficial to me. And I just listen, you know. I still, you know, I'm 28 years old. I'm not the youngest guy in the world, but I still feel like I'm learning all the time. I still feel like I'm getting better, and I just try and soak as much information up as I can. And I guess Barry, I guess with you being kind of a, a teacher to him. A, Someone he looks up to. What, what can you bring to him? I guess in terms of, uh, of advice and, and what to look for, and as he moves forward in his career. Uh, I think Carl Trump is one of the best Irish fighters that there's ever been. And that, that's a bold statement. And yeah, he's 28 years old. He's chronologically 28, but physiologically he's only a young man because of the way he fights, the way the style is. He doesn't take a lot of punishment. Um, uh, he can box going back, going forward, and uh, I think he's got a great, uh, he's got a great style of fighting. The Americans are going to love him, and uh, you know, and obviously, you know, 18th of July is the fight where where we make our first impression, and, and I believe it's going to be a big impression. So we're expecting a tough fight, but I really believe that Carl has both the personality, the fighting style and the charisma to, to, to make it work over here. And, you know, I believe we're on the threshold of, you know, some very big things. I guess, Barry, one last question, Barry. I guess looking at him, does it bring back a, a lot of memories for you, I guess, in, in terms of your career in any way? I, I know you had uh, the great win over Eusebio Pedrosa and, you know, the great fight with Stevie Cruz, but does it bring back a, a lot of memories for you, seeing Carl? The next best thing to actually find yourself is, is being involved with young men and developing young talent. And uh, you know, as you come along through your career, and I'm sure the same with uh, the same is with, with Alejandro Gonzalez's dad. You know, being involved with kids and developing them, especially if they're your own child. And, and often, Carl feels like he's part of the family. He's been involved uh, so long, but he's you know he's a really kid, a really talented kid, very dedicated, and. Um, uh, 
uh, you know, it's great to see him make progress. And for me, uh, vicariously, I, 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 I love and appreciate all the things that he's doing and making the progress he's making and turning into the fighter that I always believed he could. So, uh, you know, it's onwards and upwards. But thank you for the, for the questions and um, thank you guys. Our next question is from David Geisman with BoxingScene.com. Go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Carl, you mentioned a few names that uh, are with Al Heyman and are featherweights, but there are a couple junior featherweights that are not with Al Heyman, being Guillermo Rigondeau and Scott Quigg. Uh, what do you see as being the potential for you ever fighting either or both of those guys? Hey, look, I would like to fight them all. I think the, the situation with Quigg is um, he's outpriced himself in a fight. Um, he, he thinks he's worth more than what he is. Um, I was told, I was always told by my mother growing up never to sell myself short, so why should I, you know, I'm not going to sell myself short to Scott Quigg or Eddie Hearn. I think the Rigondo fight is a great possibility. There's rumors that he may be uh, linking up with Al Heyman, and if, that, if, he, if he does link up with Al Heyman, then of course the fight would be easy to make. But I believe I could win. Um, you, know, you know, you look at Rigondo, I completely admire what he does and his fighting style, but I think... I'm the only man in the super phantom with the vision that, that can beat him. Um, and I'm ready to take that fight when, whenever it comes. <laughs> How long do you see yourself sticking around at 122? Well, I, I can stay here as, as long as possible. I think I, I could probably, if I wanted to be, I could be a career super phantom with. I find it, uh, that I'm making the weight division a little bit easier with each camp. I think my body just gets used to it. But I'm a big super phantom with. You know, I, I'm not... I think Alejandro Gonzalez is maybe a few inches taller than me. He's about five foot seven or eight. I'm about five foot five, but um, I, you know, I'm I'm strong. I'm very very solid. I'm, I'm quite a big super bottom weight. But um, if I wanted, I could stay here for the rest of my career. But um, I think it's, it's some sort of legacy. I'm important to move up through the weight division. And I would be. I I think I would be very. At uh, featherweight and for uh, featherweight as well. Yeah, but can I just uh, go back to the Scott Quake scenario? Sure. Very simple situation with Scott Quake. Scott Quake has got the regular title. Scott Quake has never headlined the show, although he's the champion, and I really respect the guy. He thinks I don't, but I do. I just want to get the re put set the record straight in America too. And, and he's a decent fighter, no question about it. Never had, had never fought the level of opposition Carlos fought. Never the rest of the champion. Carlos won incredible, uh, the IBF title, and the real champion in the WP is Guillermo Rigondeau. So for him to come in and ask for 50% of the purse, particularly if we're Mary, we're losing you. Say again? Uh, you keep cutting out. Can you listen to a better? Uh, can you hear us now? Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Um, where did you lose me, David? Uh, you can just pick up from where you were going. Well, basically, we we we, we feel that um, I just wanted to put it down uh, on, on in, in the in the U.S. Um, Scott Quigg doesn't merit fifty percent of the purse. Um, Carl has won all his title fights. He's taken risks. Uh, he's banged out arenas. He's been a headline act. Uh, all of the things that Quick has not done. Quick has got the WBA regular title. The real WBA champion is uh, Guillermo Rigondeau. When Heard uh, took it upon himself to go and ask because of his relationship with, with Lindsay Tucker, he went behind our back and asked. Could the fight be sanctioned as a unification fight? And Lindsay Tucker kicked it into touch and told him, no, it can't because it's not a valuable title. Uh, and it's not a recognized title. The real champion is still ever Rigondeau. So with that in mind, it would be, we don't want the WBA regular title. We're not interested in the WBA regular title. Uh, we're interested in the fight, but not in that title. So therefore... Um, we are, of course, interested in Guillermo Rigondeau's uh, super WBA title. That's, some, that's a different story. But the fact is, if we're going to Manchester, we're putting Carl's credibility on the line, and we're going into his home court. He 
Nancy is not getting 50% of the first because this is, in fact, a voluntary defense from Carl. If, that's what, if it ever turns around the fight, that's what it would, that's what it would amount to. And when, when you come into the situation of the voluntary defense, the guy gets as much as the champion wants to pay him, or even in a mandatory position, it's still a 75 25% situation. So we said we'd start at 70-30, but the least we would take would be 60-40, and they wouldn't play a ball. It's as simple as that. So the fight doesn't matter, and therefore we now have a situation where we can fight a number of these great guys, provided we, Carl gets back and gets past Alejandro Gonzalez on the 18th of July. We can look at all of these other our connection now with Alejandro. Thank you, Barry. Uh, and then my last question for Carl. Carl, you, you very much explained why you're coming to the States and why fighting in Texas makes sense, but you've been a big star back across the pond. How much of an adjustment is it going to be for you not being in that arena full of the big supporting crowd for you? I think it'll be absolutely fine. Um, you know, I, I've boxed all over the world as an amateur. Um, I've boxed, uh, you know, I've boxed away from home a lot, of, a lot of the time. I've been in very, very hostile environments in Turkey. Um, I remember Turkey being extremely hostile for some reason. Um, and I went out there and beat beat three Turks uh, three days in a row. Um, so I, look, I'm, I'm used to it. I don't. I think I can feed off it. Um, and I think the Mexican boxing fans are very discerning fans. They'll they'll know a good fighter when they see one. And uh, you know, obviously, I, I'm probably expecting a few boos, and they'll be hoping that Alejandro Gonzalez can can win the fight and upset the odds and, and beat me. Um, but I know when I start to silence the crowd. Um, then that's then that's when I've got their man. Okay. Our next question is from Declan Warrington with Daily Star. Go ahead, Declan. Um, Carl, just just quickly um, to clarify something. There. Were you saying it was Scott Quigg or Rigondo is looking to sign up with Val Heyman? I think I think there's rumours. I don't know 100. percent I'm just I'm just going by what I see on the internet. But apparently. Uh, uh, Regal may sign with Heyman um, pretty soon. Oh, you, you didn't mean Scott Quigg for a second there. It sounded like that's who you suggested. Oh, I don't... Uh, no, I didn't mean Scott Quigg. I think he, I think he wants guys that uh, sell tickets on our big name, so I, I don't I don't know why I would want him. OK, fair enough. Um, you, you were talking earlier about the fact that your last fight was on ITV. That, that put you on terrestrial television to a new audience. Have you noticed any difference around you lately since that fight, you know, maybe more people recognising you in the street, anything like that? I get recognised a little bit. Um, obviously, back home in Belfast, it's, it's big, and, and especially around the fight, um, it's hard to kind of go anywhere without, um, you know, someone coming and asking for a photograph or, or even just to shake your hand, which I don't mind at all. You know, I enjoy it. I enjoy, I enjoy people's company. I enjoy chatting to them. Um, in, in London, it's obviously since the last fight, it has got a little bit better. Well better or, or worse, whatever you want to call it. Um, people are approaching me a little bit more, but um, I can still go fairly unrecognizable in London. But, you know, it's, it's all it's all about the change. I think we're fighting, you know, fighting on CBS here and fighting on ITV at prime time, um, a prime time slot. We don't have any other big shows to go up against. The last time I fought, it was, it was pretty late on, on ITV. Um, match of the day and stuff was on at the same time, so... Um, they took a lot of viewing figures, so we're expecting to do a lot of million viewers here. And obviously, um, when you do that, more people are going to recognize you in the street. Sure, sure. Did you get any feedback from ITV over how the last fight went, if they were pleased with it? Because obviously, you know, if they are, that, you know, that could be great for you in the long term. Say it again. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Did you get any feedback from ITV about how they felt the last fight went for you? Because, you know, obviously... If I think they were over the moon with it, and, and that's why they just came back and they're, they're showing another. You know, if they weren't happy with it, they wouldn't have put me back on again. That's, that's the bottom line. So ITV were very, very happy. Um, they were very happy with their viewing figures, um, and they want to continue a relationship with us, uh, and that, that continues with, with the fight on the 18th against Alejandro Gonzalez. Can I just mention... Oh, okay, great. Um, we're actually going to take one question for Alejandro Gonzalez, and then we have to move on to Julio Cesar Chavez. So... Um, uh, can we please have the question for Alejandro and then we will uh, turn it over. Alejandro, you fought before at the Sun Bowl on the uh, Julio Cesar Chavez undercard. You 
Scott Theopoto Gonzalez in the first round. Uh, that was an upset. Are you looking to upset uh, Carl Frampton this boy here, Chalk the World? Yeah, um, this is going to be my second time fighting on Charles this undercard, but I'm very happy to fight a great fighter. You know, my dad once told me, if you want to be the best, you have to fight the best. So that's, that's what I think, that Carl Frampton is one of the best men on Super Venom, wait, chat. You looking forward to fighting in front of a huge Mexican American crowd in El Paso, too, I'm assuming? Um, I, for you? I, I, I couldn't hear you well, sorry. You're looking forward to fighting in front of a huge Mexican American boxing crowd in El Paso, I'm assuming, as well? Yeah, of course. Like, well, El Paso, there's a lot of Mexican people, and like I just said, um, Chavez is going to be in that fight. He's a Mexican, so he has a lot of crowd. I have a lot of crowd. And it's going to be a great fight. A lot of people, a lot of Mexican and American people in, in the fight. Okay, great. Uh, thank you all, you, you gentlemen, so much. Um, we do.